Hello, uh, in this video we're going to be introducing ggplot2, uh, which is a package in the R programming language that is a very commonly used and powerful package for creating graphics. Uh, so ggplot2 is a part of the tidyverse, uh, so typically when I load in uh, ggplot2 I'm doing it with the tidyverse package, so I do library tidyverse, we'll bring in ggplot2 and a bunch of other stuff as well. Now, ggplot2 is interesting because it is based on a, the grammar of graphics, which is sort of a philosophy of graphing that thinks about how we can build up graphs one component at a time and end up with a graph at the end. And this makes every single part of a graph very easy to manipulate and that you can get into a lot of detail on all of the aspects of your graph that you want to change and how exactly you want them to look and in a way that's going to be consistent across all the kinds of things that you want to do. So once you know how to do one thing, you generally know how to do lots of things because there's a consistent syntax and a consistent philosophy about how things are done. So what are the grammar of graphics? There's seven components. At the very baseline, you have the data that you're starting with. Uh, and this can be any kind of data. So it can be data that you know, ggplot2 might be doing some, some calculations to that data before it shows it to you. On top of the data, we have the aesthetics. You can sort of think of these as the different axes of your graph. So in a graph, we will typically have an x-axis and a y-axis. Great, but that's not actually all the axes that we have, because what axes are, they're just ways in which our data varies. So instead of just having x and y, you could also have color. If different data points have different colors, that means that color is sort of an axis on your graph. Uh, so uh, anything, and this can be a lot of stuff. It could be the size of what you're seeing. It could be the type of line that you do, the, sure, the shape that you draw. Uh, or the, the, the border color versus the inner color, right? There's lots of different types of axes, different ways in which the data that you are presenting could differ. Uh, and anything like that is part of the aesthetic. Once we have our aesthetic, uh, we can on top of that think about scale. So each of those aesthetic values, things like the x-axis, the y-axis, the color, the size, all that sort of thing, follows a scale. So the color scale, uh, we can specify. Uh, so on an x-axis, of course, there's just zero and above, right? You, you Any different number that you have. Maybe you could do a calculation. Maybe instead of drawing it just as a regular number, you could take the log, the logarithm, and say, put it on a log scale. That would be one scaling of it. You could do the same thing with, say, color. Uh, you could, if you have a color scale that goes from dark blue to light blue, you could change how that, how that changes. Maybe that's on a log scale. Uh, or if you have different kinds of colors, you could say, okay, well, by default, maybe uh, the uh, the big the trucks are green and the regular cars are blue, but I want them to be red and black. And so you could change those with the scale. Once we have our data, aesthetics, and scale, it sort of knows what kind of graph it's making uh, and it knows what data points it's going to put on there. But it doesn't know what it's actually going to draw. For that, we need our geometric objects. So we have our scales, we have our axes. What kind of thing do you want to draw? Do you want to draw a line? Do you want to draw some points? Do you want to draw any sort of thing? There's lots of different kinds of geometries to work with. Then there's the statistics. Uh, are you just drawing the data by itself or are you doing some sort of calculation of the data? Do I want to draw a, every single point of data that I have gets its own point on the scatter plot, or do I want to take the mean of the trucks, put that on there, and the mean of the cars and put that on there as well? So are we doing any sort of calculation? Uh, are there also things like confidence intervals, right? Do I want to put a prediction interval on my data? That would also fall under, under statistics. Then there's facets. Uh, so if we want to do separate graphs, so maybe I want to do a graph of truck information up here, and then next to it over here, a graph of car information. That would be an example of faceting. And then finally, on the top, we got our coordinate system. Do we want to just have uh, regular X and Y axes? Do we want to have polar coordinates that go in a circle? Lots of options there. Do we want to fix the coordinates to make sure that graphically on the screen, uh, the distance between 0 and 1 on the x-axis is the exact same as the distance between 0 and 1 on the y-axis, which wouldn't be the case, for example, if you had sort of a skewed size of graph. So that's the grammar of graphics. We can build up from the base, adding on elements as we go. And as we've added on each element, we're going to have a set of axes uh, that tell us the way in which our data varies, and the scale, which tells us how we can take the way our data varies and turn it into what it, we, we present, right? Is the difference between 0 and 1 like this, or is it like this? Uh, because we took a log or something like that. Uh, we have the kinds of things we want to draw. Am I going to draw a line? Am I going to draw points? Uh, and then all sorts of other stuff on top of this. So let's do some, some quick examples of this. The things we definitely need to make sure that we specify when we're doing an example and setting up a ggplot graph, we want to make sure we have our data, we want to have our aesthetic, and we want to have our geometry. Everything else is definitely in there, all the different layers of the uh, grammar of graphics. They're in there, you have to have them, but they're a good default, so generally we don't have to mess with them all the time. So let's say that we have some data. Uh, this is some cars data. 
Uh, and what I want to do is I want to plot miles per gallon against horsepower uh, on a scatter plot, and I want to do it separately by uh, whether it's an automatic transmission or a manual transmission. So what do I have in my ggplot command? So I, I start with ggplot, and first I give it the data. The data the set that I'm working with is called MT car, so I put that first. Next, I want to tell it the axes that we're working on, the aesthetic that we have. So on the x-axis, I want that to vary by miles per gallon. The more miles per gallon you have, the further you out you are on the x-axis. On the y-axis, I'm going to have horsepower. Uh, and then I want the color to differ by transmission. So if you have an automatic transmission, that's going to be one color. If you have a manual transmission, that's going to be a different color, right? They're varying by color. We have a color axis here. And then what do I actually want to draw? I want a scatter plot. That's going to be the geom point function right there. So I've taken my ggplot function. I've told it the data that I'm working with. I've told it the aesthetic that I have. So all of the axes that we're varying along, that's a function by itself. And then I'm going to add on to that the point geometry. And that's going to give us that we, uh, what we need right there. And you can see the result. We have miles per gallon on the x-axis. We have horsepower on the y-axis. And we are coloring differently by automatic versus manual transmission. The geometry, of course, is what actually gets drawn. There are lots of different kinds of geometries. Uh, for example, the geom point or geom line are very common ones, just drawing a point or drawing a line. Uh, there's also geom bar for bar plots. There's geom text to put little text markers on the data. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different options that we're not going to go into here, uh, but that's the basics of it. If you can think about the kind of graph that you want to be drawn, there's probably a geometry function either in ggplot2 or in another package that adds on to ggplot2 that you can use. Uh, here's an example of geom line. So here we have our economics data. On the x-axis, we have date. On the y-axis, we have uh, our unemployment rate. And it just draws a line. It draws a, we have, we have one, one point on the y-axis for each point on the x-axis, and we connect them with a line. Simple as that. Geom text uh, puts text labels on there. Uh, so instead of the, uh, the just a point for the data, I want to put the name of the car. This one got a little bit messy, but you can see what's going on there. This might be very useful. Uh, for a one we have a lot fewer data points for one, uh, or if you just wanted to put some text labels for just some of your data points as well. Now, one thing that uh, ggplot is very, very good at uh, that Excel is not very good at is groupings, right? So we mentioned that you can have any sort of axes that you want. And so it's, if you want something to be colored differently or filled differently or shaped differently or just done differently by groups, all you have to do is tell, hey, ggplot, Whatever, here's, here's an attribute, I want it to vary by this variable. So here, I want uh, to have a different color, a different fill color uh, for each uh, category of data that I have. So here's the categories, apple, banana, and carrot. Uh, and so I just say, hey, on the x-axis, I want the person. So differ by person. On the y-axis, I want quality. So I've, I've sort of given a quality measure here. And I want the fill, the, color, the fill color to be different by the category. There's also a color option, uh, which is for things like lines and outlines uh, or points. The fill will be the inside of it. Uh, so I want the fill to be different by category. And so you can see that uh, I've done a, a column geometry here with the dodge option. Uh, position equals dodge. That puts the me over here and the you over here. So they're not on top of each other. Uh, and I've separated it out by category. And that's a good way to go start thinking about ggplot, that in your data, you're going to have one observation per row. Instead of having a column for each variable, like you would in Excel, here we're going to have one column with the all the data that you have, which might be categorized differently. So you got group one up here, group two down here. And you tell ggplot, hey, do this group separately from this group, and it will do it very easily for pretty much any kind of data that you have. I mentioned that you can do calculations as well. Uh, there are some geometries that do a calculation for you before you're graphing the data. So instead of graphing each data point, it will graph the calculation. Uh, geom density or geom histogram will do density plots or histograms. Uh, there's also lots of other kinds. Uh, geom bar will do a count. So how many observations are there of each type? Uh, geom smooth will fit a line uh, to your data. You can do a regression line. You could do a lowest curve, things like that. Uh, there's, again, lots of options here. Here's an example of a density plot where I just put the density on. So instead of doing uh, showing me each value of MPG, it's showing me the distribution of MPG. I use this one all the time. All right, that is a very basic introduction to ggplot2, uh, which should hopefully give you enough to at least get started doing some graphs uh, on your own. And remember, so what do we have in our ggplot system? Uh, we have a ggplot function, which takes the data. We have to have data. It also takes the aesthetic. The aesthetic tells us the columns on which, or the, the uh, axes on which our data is varying, which is going to be the x-axis and the y-axis, but also stuff like color, shape, line type, size, all those sorts of things. And there's lots of different things that go in there. Once we have our data and our aesthetic, we can add on to that geometries. 
Uh, geometry is the actual things that are going to get drawn on those sets of axes that you set up. If you actually just put in a ggplot function by itself with data and axes, it will show you a graph. It just won't have anything on it. It'll just be the blank canvas that you're going to draw on by adding on geometries. Uh, so you can take your data, you can give it some axes, you can draw some geometries on top of it, you can uh, change things like the color and the size by group. You can actually add multiple geometries on at once. Uh, that stuff starts to get a little bit more advanced. We'll get to that in later videos. Uh, but that is a basic introduction to what the grammar of graphics is and how you can draw some basic graphs in ggplot2 uh, using the grammar of graphics. Thank you.